This is a walkthrough of how to complete the 2022 Getting Started Challenge for the Rico Theta. You first need to fork the repository on GitHub from the base challenge template. I'm going to fork it to my organization opkey. Once you complete the challenge, push your changes back up to your forked repository then drop the link into the form. To complete the challenge, I'm going to first clone down the code from the repository that I just forked. In this example, I have the SSH keys configured for my local computer on GitHub. If you don't have the SSH keys enabled, you should use HTTPS when you get the URL for your GitHub repo. I'm first going to change directory into the new repo that I just cloned down. And then I'm going to run flutter pub get to make sure all the packages are uh, downloaded and put into the flutter. After downloading the all the packages into my new flutter project, I'm going to connect the physical device Google Pixel 4a in this example and run the code directly on the physical device phone. After running flutter pub get, I'm going to connect the physical device. I have a Pixel 4a with a USB-C cable to my Windows laptop. My Android phone is already in developer mode and I'm going to enable debugging so that I can communicate with my VS code. My VS Code editor already has the Dart and Flutter extensions installed. So I'm going to select the main.dart file within the lib subfolder. And then I'm going to select run. When run is going to pop up, open all the physical and emulated devices I have. I'm going to select run without debugging. So this is going to be running on my physical device phone. After a few minutes, the application will launch on the physical phone. If you don't have a Ricoh Theta camera, you can still access the gallery using the image icon. You can download sample media and store it in the gallery from our form. This tutorial assumes you have a Ricoh Theta camera. So if you don't have one, you could refer to the previous tutorial, which focuses on just getting the images from the gallery. To connect a Ricoh Theta camera, you connect your mobile phone. In this case, it's a Pixel 4a with Wi-Fi to the Ricoh Theta camera. The Ricoh Theta camera is a hotspot. Once you connect the camera to the mobile phone, you can then take pictures with the mobile app and populate your gallery. The sample application will automatically download the pictures from the Ricoh Theta camera and save it into the galleries folder of your mobile phone. Then you can browse the gallery with the image icon, select the image that you want and view it in 360 view. The purpose of the tutorial and the challenge is for you to edit this 360 view of the camera. On the right hand side is a mirroring software. So I'm going to sh first show you the workflow to actually take the picture with the camera. To take a reasonable shot, you want to place the Ricoh Theta camera on top of a monopod which sits on a, some type of tripod base. Then you need to get your mobile phone and connect it to the Ricoh Theta camera with Wi-Fi. You can then use the sample mobile app that you're building to take a picture and then view the picture uh, on the local device. So the sample application does automatically download the image from the camera onto the local storage. Ideally, you want to stand far away from the camera, or at least far enough so that you're not in the scene. And the typical thing is to actually hide behind a pillar or some type of wall. With the media installed, we're now ready to modify the code, which is the challenge. And we'll make some simple modifications to get you started. On line 134 of main.dart, there's a widget called Panorama on line 143. If you mouse over Panorama, you can see the properties that this widget has. This widget is the one that's responsible to control how the, uh, the 360 view appears. 
So we're going to set the atom speed, which means that it's going to auto rotate when you first launch the application. Uh, atom speed of 1.0 is a fairly slow rotation. And you can adjust the effect to see whether you want a fast rotation, no rotation, or a fairly slow rotation. Once you make the modification just to this one line on line 144, you can then run it and run without uh, debugging. I'm using screen mirroring software so that you can see what the mobile phone looks like more clearly. So the, uh, the window on the right is the exact mobile phone. You can see that without rotating the screen with my finger, it does have a rotational speed of 1.0. At this point, this is good enough to complete the challenge. You could theoretically just push this thing up to GitHub and drop the link to the repo into the form, and it qualifies you to be entered into the luck of the draw lottery to attempt to win the $300 camera. Uh, if you want more challenge, just follow along with the video, and we'll do some additional simple modifications to this panorama widget. One thing you can do right now is simply to change the atom speed on 144. So in this example, it's 3. As soon as you save it, even without the hot restart, you can see that the animation speed of the panorama has increased. So you set it to 5. So I'm not touching the screen at all with my finger. This is just the automatic rotational speed of the panorama widget. You can easily set it to automatically spin for the speed that you want, and this could complete the challenge. I'm gonna set it back down to 1.0 because I want to enable the sensors of the mobile phone, the, the motion or the orientation sensors on it. And I'm gonna use the sensors to see where the, how to orient the image within the panorama. So if you move the mobile phone around, it will change how the view is displayed within the panorama window. So first I'm going to adjust the sensor control property on line 145 to sensor control dot orientation and then let's start it up again. On the left hand side is a webcam so you can see how the physical device mobile phone is moving. You can tell that as if I rotate it around the vertical axis the picture rotates as well too. There, there's some loss of resolution with the screen mirroring program, but you can tell that the actual image on the phone itself on the left-hand portion is crystal clear. So you can use the orientation sensors within the camera body itself to move the camera around. This is pretty common to use, uh, kind of like a VR experience where you're trying to immerse yourself into the image. The next technique is to wrap the Flutter Panorama widget within a Flutter stack. So I've already wrapped it with a stack on line 142. Now I'm going to drop in an image.network with a URL for a network-based image. In this example, the mobile phone is connected to the internet with Wi-Fi, so it's no longer connected to the camera at this point. The Flutter stack receives a list of children and the bottom layer, so the one, uh, the, the layer that is below, the lowest one is the one that's going to be on top. You can see that we have the Theta360.guide logo that's glued to the top portion of the panorama. In this next example, I'm going to grab the logo for the opkey.com logo. I'm going to, because it's nice and square, so I'm going to glue this thing onto the top of the panorama so that it's stationary as the background rotates. So we'll just drop in the URL here in the image.network stack, and we will hot reload it and see what happens. Actually, I think before I reload it, I'm gonna wrap it with a sized box. This is a standard Flutter widget. I'm gonna apply height and width of 80 pixels so that the, the company logo, the brand doesn't overwhelm the view of the panoramic image. And now let's do the hot restart and see how it looks. Okay, so the app just restarted, so we need to go into the gallery and select the image. Well, 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. So again, the tearing on the screen is due to the screen mirroring software. But this might be an effect that you might want to apply to some type of gallery. Um, you could make this obviously logo more transparent, maybe do a watermark style for it um, so that it's not that intrusive onto the viewing experience of your audience. But I think it's, it's okay, uh, even at this size. One of the things I noticed with the sensors when I was playing around with the physical device mobile phone is that the orientation is flipped for if you were to put it into a VR headset. So I'm going to use the sensor control dot absolute orientation so that when the person looks up, the scene appears that uh, it's, it's moving up. So this might be slightly different than you know, if you're flipping through it with your finger. But I think this is probably what you would expect from a headset. So it's a little bit better uh, for that VR experience with the absolute orientation parameter. Okay, so you don't need to do this complex of a modification. You could just make a simple modification. But I think this is uh, quite a bit of fun. And go to this URL here and drop the URL for your repo right here in the form. Just reply to it. And you'll be entered into a chance to win, it's the luck of the draw, a free Ricoh Theta SC2 camera or cash equivalent, the value being the, the value in the United States.